What up guys? This is Hayden from 440 and today I'm going to introduce myself and allow you to get to know me a little better. I'm a sneaker reseller out of Cleveland, Ohio and I've been moving shoes for a couple years now. My goal is to bring culture back to Cleveland and to allow people to have the opportunity to purchase the shoes they love that always seem to sell out. To do this, we're gonna start off with a little Q&A with my producer, Danye, so you guys can get to learn a little bit about me. My nickname is Speed, you can call me Speed. Speed is cool, I'm gonna know who you're talking to. Okay, Speed, question number one. When did you start reselling? So, I started reselling in about eighth grade, and the reason why I started reselling was because my parents were never able to afford nice shoes for me. You know, you'd always see kids in your school rocking retros, rocking Jordans. And it was hard for me because I felt like I was unpopular because I didn't have that stuff. And you should never think that your popularity depends on your social status or what you own, even though that's many times the case. If you can't own Jordans, that's nothing on you. So I started reselling in the eighth grade because I wanted to get myself right. And I knew the only way I was going to be able to afford that stuff is if I got the money myself. That's when the hustle started. Speed, how much money did you start off with when you started to resell? Okay, so when I originally started reselling, I started with nil dollars. I mean, maybe I had a 20 in my pocket. I was an eighth grader. And you don't have money when you're in eighth grade like that. I didn't have an allowance or anything like that. Um, but I started selling all my stuff that I had. I spent it on some dumb stuff. I started with like 150 bucks. When I really got back into the game, it's when I was broke. I was just, I, I was zero in my PayPal account. And I sold my Kobe What the Nine Elites and started off with 150 bucks. And that's what got the, the snowball rolling down the avalanche. So yeah, 150 bucks. You can do it with anything. You got 20 bucks in your pocket, you can do it. You can make it happen. Just buy something you know you can flip. Got grandma's sweater you can sell. Get a little right, bucks. Right, right. Go to your you granny. Know. They're like, hey, granny, you got any vintage? Let me grab a piece of vintage. You know what I mean? <laughs> you start talking to a Tony. You're like, hey, Tony, let me get the calabrasa. Let me get the pasta. You're like, that has nothing to do with the resale story, though, buddy. And you're like, well, shit, let me sell a couple Geppettos. You know, you open a lemonade stand, you get some lemons going. I don't know. You start a hustle. You can sell anything. If you're a salesman, you got a fashion, you're going to find a way. Okay, that's why I tell a Tony. That's why I tell a Calabrese. You know what I mean? Damio, Damio knows what I mean. Hello, Come on. Okay. Money call, got a money call. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mm -mm. Walk in a room, Mazda. Zoom, zoom. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'ma send it back, I'ma send it back, I'ma get it back. And I spit it all on a track. Cause you know I'm running back, running back. Land man, running through the past, running back. I'm a. Speed, what was the first pair of shoes that you sold to a customer? So the first pair of shoes I sold, bought and sold, were the Jordan 11 Legend Blues or Columbia's. Uh, they were my favorite Jordan looking at Jordans at the time. Um, I love the blue and white combo. Blue's my favorite color. So I purchased a pair for, I, I think it was 200. It was a lightly used pair. Wore them a couple times and then, then I flipped them for 250. What was the first main accessory, like fashion accessory that you've sold? The first accessory I sold was probably the Supreme Butterfly knife. That was, that was I missed, that was a cool piece. A little keychain. What was the first site you started selling on? So I originally started with eBay and now it's a lot better because there's no fees. But back in the day, I was paying fees out the wise. Uh, I was selling everything in my house. It wasn't even just shoes at the beginning. It was just becoming a reseller, starting that reseller mindset. Um, so I was selling everything from fans to Nerf guns to car parts to anything I could find in my house and make a buck on just to build my capital up. What is your favorite personal sneaker? My favorite personal sneaker. Um, okay, so currently my favorite pair is probably the Pantone 11s. Um, those babies are clean. I love the blue. And like I said, blue is my favorite color. That baby blue, you can't beat that. And you don't really see a lot of people wearing them. But a close second would probably be the Zoom Racer 1s. They call them the poor Dior's just because they look like the Dior's. The soles on those are just icy. Icy. What is your favorite accessory? So my favorite accessory that I currently own is probably the OG Travis Scott cereal box. I'm sure many of you have seen this. This is from the original 
Reese's Puff Drop. Got a map astral on the back. Reflective lightning. Just everything about this. I love it. I love that it's cased up. It's just an OG piece. And yeah, this reminds me of the uh, the second time that they dropped the, the Reese's Puffs. I mean, anybody that really knows me up to this point knows that I cashed out on the Reese's Puffs. Like the OG ones, I'd go to the Walmart, Target, wherever they had them, and I'd clear the shelves. Like they had 20 boxes, I was buying all 20. I'm still sitting on a lot of boxes because, come on guys, I mean, they're, they're going to be worth something to somebody someday. I mean, I know they're expired. I know you can't eat them, but they're still cool to sit on the shelf. Okay, this is probably a little obvious, but who is your favorite rapper? Travis Scott, my favorite artist. Um, and it's not even just the fact that he's my favorite artist. Like, yeah, I love his music, everything that he makes. I just love his distortion and, and his noises and his and his beats. It's just everything about it. I love the vibe. It inspires me. And it's not even just the fact that I like his music. He's an entrepreneur himself. I mean, you've seen Travis Scott even if you don't know who he is, on multiple platforms, whether it's his Fortnite collaboration, whether it's him being on shelves in the cereal store, I mean, whether it's his collaboration with McDonald's. If you're pulling the McDonald's and you don't know who it is, you see the Travis Scott meal, like, straight up, you know what I mean? Like, straight everybody up! Everybody knows who the guy is. And he's, he's an entrepreneur and a hustler, and he's trying to diversify his income and his revenue and just diverge himself into culture as much as possible and i respect that and that inspires me to be a bigger grinder who is your close second and third rapper uh okay so future like hands down second i mean I, I listen to him the most statistically because he's got more music and i future is my guy and then a close third would probably be Lil Uzi is definitely my third. It definitely. I mean, if I'm huh? second, he's, he's kind what? of high school. But like statistically, I listen to Future more. But Uzi, gotta love him. I mean, he's just a little guy. Makes you smile when you hear his music. Uzi is Uzi's a guy. Uzi's a guy. What is your favorite song of all time? Favorite song of all time. So it's got to be Coordinate by Travis. Or I'll give a close second to I Serve the Bass by Future. That's a great song. I'd recommend listening to it. Might not like it. It's not everybody's speed, but... It's a banger. Hit it with a scope, zoom, zoom. Mother on a roll, man. I don't know why I run it. I don't know how I'm stunned. I just be stacking the green and the blue. Up with a team, way on the mezzanine, off a beam, man. And we sipping on a lane, just kidding. That is sprite clean. I don't, mm. What is your favorite bear brick that you own? So, currently, that I own, probably the Antisocial Social Club Bear. I mean, that's just, you, you gotta love that. It's just an iconic collaboration. A thing's going to be worth a lot. I mean, the 400 percent's already banging for a lot. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's the bear. What is your dream shoe that you will own in the future? Uh, well, Jordan 1 is my favorite silhouette. So it's definitely a Jordan 1. I mean, mm, obviously the 85s, any collector or reseller would love to have their hands on a pair of 1985 Jordan 1 Chicago's. That's a classic color. Everyone knows that. It sells for so much money. Um, but a personal that I'd wear, no, definitely the Dior ones. I, I mean, if you're wearing the Dior ones, you're 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 just you're a fucking flexor. I mean, uh, that's just that's, that's, Stick em. the Dior ones. The highs too, not the lows. The lows are cool. Like I have the opportunity to have them. I mean, I I'd cop them at the right price. But the Dior one high is like that's that's amazing. Ten. What is your favorite shoe that you've had in your possession that you've had to sell, but you want to keep? Uh, well, probably the Travis One Highs. I mean, I like to not keep myself to a lot of personals just because I want to keep the revenue flowing and, you know, stack up the bread. If you keep a lot of personals for yourself, obviously that's just money sitting. And yeah, it can be looked at it as an investment. Like, oh yeah, it's going to gain money. But at the same time, it's hard for me to justify holding $1,000 shoes when I'm on the road to the ceiling, you know? So the Travis one high is definitely a pair I wish I still had and I let go. Probably too soon too. I sold them for like a thousand bucks, slightly used. And I know that comps are probably like 1500 right now for a size 11. So it's a little, it's a little tricky, but you gotta do what you gotta do. You know, it's part of the game. Coming at you live here, 4-4 Studios coming out the basement. Mm, mm, I'm getting my money up. Mm, mm, you'll be and she funny up. Mm, mm, I'm running a running up. Mm, mm, stacking the green and the blue. Up with the team, up with the team. When we smoking on green, just kidding, that's illegal. Just kidding. I'm a nigga. Wait a minute, huh? 
Running and I gotta get it back like I'm on a track. I don't know why you be trying to hop on my money hat. I don't know why you be trying to hate when I'm something that. Mm. God damn, I'm my money rat. Mm. And your bit and she kind of flat. Mm. We back. <laughs> Speedy, what is your favorite clothing piece? Well, it's funny you ask that. I'm actually wearing it. This is my V Lone Pop Smoke merch tee. Yeah, it's got all the names of the album on the side. Rest in peace, Pop. He was a great artist. He's one of my favorites, too. Top five for sure, but... Yeah, this is a clean piece overall. I mean, this is... Love repping the man. Tragic. It's tragic, man. But he's one of my favorites for sure. And this piece is, is clean and definitely not going to be wearing it too much because I want to wanna keep it fresh for a while, so, you know. Speed, in your opinion, what were your top three releases of 2020? Okay, so I'm definitely gonna go with the Chunky Dunks. Those were an instant classic. Um, I mean, that just the quality on that shoe, absolutely beautiful. We're gonna post it right here for you to see if you haven't seen it before. Um, the Mocha Ones that just came out for sure. Great way to end the year off. That was a, a real big hit. Um, just like the Travis Ones, everybody's loving them. The value's shooting up on them. That's a really classic piece. I suggest if you wanna get a pair, you buy one now. They might be a little pricey, but they're gonna be a lot pricier in the future. And the third pair, I'm about to circle back here a little bit, but probably the Off-White 5 Sales. Those are definitely a classic. Um, it is the only the second Off-White collaboration with the Jordan 5 silhouette. The the blacks were the first one. So yeah, def definitely the fives. Those were, those were clean. I don't own a pair, but the hype around that shoe was phenomenal. A lot of people gave a lot of criticism that pair and said it was like a piss yellow. What would you have to say about that? I mean, a lot of people can say it stuff about a lot of stuff i mean everybody's always got a, a different angle at approaching things i mean some people are going to be critical about yeezys they think they look horrible some people don't like these yeezy slides even <laughs> though they're my favorite thing to wear every day that's the only thing that's on my feet sure yeah call them prison slides you think i care i don't care but i i respect and appreciate your opinion everybody has the right to their own opinion if you don't like them don't buy them you like them buy them everybody's going to be critical on pairs of shoes some people don't like them some people do that's the beauty about shoes. There's releases every month. If you don't like this one, I'm sure you're going to like the next one. If you don't like the next one, guess what? 30 more releases on the year. There's a shoe that everybody can love and appreciate. Well, whether it's the color, whether it's the silhouette, there's a shoe for everyone. What's in behind you? Okay, so, funny you ask. This is my first line of apparel, if you will. 440 apparel. Um, I've always had a dream of just being an artist in general and like creating pieces. And it's not like I handcrafted this, although I did, I do hand sew every label on them and they are custom 440 labels. Uh, but I really just wanted to make my own pieces. I, I love I love these colors. This is my iconic arrow directional logo. Uh, tees are available on my website, come shop. <laughs> but uh, I love the fact that art is not selective. Anyone can be an artist. If you have a dream, if you have a passion, if you have a vision, you are an artist. Art is subjective, it's not objective. It's based on your opinions, your beliefs, what you see is fit, and that's a beautiful thing about art. Anybody can create it, and anybody can be their own artist. And as Travis says, let your ambition carry you. If you got a dream, if you have a passion, if you have a vision, go chase that. You're the only one that's going to hold yourself back from achieving your own goals. And I'm sure you've heard the saying, dreams don't work unless you do. It's 100% true. But yeah, tees come in white, multiple sizes. They're clean, fresh, you know, affordable. I'm not looking to make money on the pieces. It's just something I'm passionate about. I want to rep the 440. The goal is to bring culture to Cleveland, to CLE, to 440, the 216. I'm trying to show love to the city, I'm trying to get people right. I haven't previewed my hoodies yet. I'm waiting to shoot the promotional video for them. As you've seen, I'm sure, my first video, my promotional video for my shirts. Link in bio, go check that out. Super cool, shots by Media7, shouts out. Put the tag here, my cousin, my main man. But, okay, so this is my hoodie that I've created. Essentially, this is glow-in-the-dark paint. I've done a galaxy splatter on the back. It's my colors. If you can see it, I hope you can see it on the camera, glows in the dark. It's kind of light in here, but Super cool. I'm so excited to release these soon. Everybody's already been asking about these and I'm sure to sell out. 
So my main vision, my main goal with the clothing isn't to necessarily slap my logo on as many white and black tees as I can and move as many pieces as I can. As I said, this is a passion project. This isn't for profit. So everything that I make is selective and everything that I make is limited. I want people to be able to purchase my hoodies. I'm only gonna make 50 of them, max 50. You can quote me now. I don't care if this video blows up, it's going to be 50 hoodies. People that like them can buy them. And I'm telling you one day, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grow that value. I'm gonna make this piece or something because I got a lot of good ideas. I got a lot of stuff to show you guys. I can't wait to show you what I've been working on. It's all gonna be coming out this year and big things to come for sure. So drop some feedback below in the comments on the pieces. You like them, you think they're cool. I mean, the colors are cool. Maybe you don't like them. Maybe it's too basic. Maybe you wouldn't wear it. Let me know. I'm here for criticism. Okay, so to wrap it up, the final question. What are your main goals for 2021? Okay, so I have a lot of goals for 2021, but I'm going to keep it brief and simple. Basically, we did 500K in sales this past year, 2020. My goal for 2021 is to double that. I want to hit a million in sales. I know we can do it. The grind is here. The hustle is here. I got my team with me. We're on the road to success here. I want to hit a million in sales. I want to have multiple clothing drops. I'm thinking three, four. I want to come out with a bunch of pieces for you guys, show you what I can make, show you where my vision is. I, I, I know you're going to love it. Even if you don't love it, you're going to be able to respect it because I, I'm going to put a lot of time into this. I have put a lot of time into this and I'm very passionate about it. So I can't wait to show you guys what I have in store. Love to have some new personals in the rotation. I'm thinking, I think I'm sitting at like 20, 30 personal pairs right now. I don't want to splurge myself too much, but like definitely buy at least a shoe a month. I, I need to keep up with these. You know, I'm a collector too. I'm not just a reseller. I enjoy wearing the shoes. So definitely at least a shoe a month. I like to keep that up. Uh, sneaker conventions. Uh, COVID has sucked, but I want to get to so many more conventions and meet so many more people. Uh, I, I Connections are so valuable to me. So valuable to me. The beauty of the sneaker game is not just the money. It's never just about the money. I mean, at first it was trying to get my money up so I could buy myself nice stuff and, and look cool. But now it's not even about that. It's about me making those connections, just meeting all you guys. I've met so many great, genuine people through reselling that share the common interest of shoes and that I could just sit on the phone with for hours and just talk about and ramble on about releases and stuff. Not everybody's like that. So for me to find people that enjoy the shoe market and enjoy the game as much as I do, that means everything to me. Uh, so I'm definitely looking to make so many more connections and meet a ton of new people at these conventions on my IG. Go give me a follow 44. I'm always buying. Just send me what you got. We'll work something out. I want to make videos on the regular too. I want to make a lot of more content. I want to inform you guys on the latest sneaker drops, what to buy, what not to buy, teach you to be a better reseller and maybe even give you some tips and tricks. I mean, I'm definitely going to be here to help you guys out and, and lead you on. If you're just beginning in the resale game, I'm going to tell you how to get your money up a little bit. If you're interested in getting in the sneaker game, I'm going to tell you what you can do to get there. So just stay tuned. I'm, we're going to cover it all. They got shit. Rose Royce truck off white like butter. All these niggas in trouble. All these hoes be fucking. Dog, you can love or don't trust them. Ain't even flex my muscle. Hit, I had to bust his bubble. Ain't too rich for no scuffle. You try me, I'm bucking. Fucking no hoes in bucking. Told her go slow and you sucking. You'll know when I'm coming. How you be humble with all of this money? Can't go back to nothing. It's different from me. Dior, Dior.